Over 90% of railways can be simplified into basic elements. The driver drives the engine, the guard tells the driver to go or to stop, the signalman tells them all where they're going, the engine does the work and the stuff behind gets pulled along for the ride. There is one thing however that is vital to how the railway works and without it nothing would go anywhere. Adhesion. Adhesion is the ratio of drawbar force to locomotive weight and relies on friction between the rail and the wheel. There are a lot of variables when it comes to adhesion, such as the condition of the railhead, the condition of the wheels, and even the weather and seasons can all play a part. However, there is a limit to this force, especially when climbing hills. The steeper the gradient, the less adhesion the engine has to the rail. If the gradient is too steep, then the engine can either stall or cause the wheels to slip or spin. Unfortunately, for many railways, having to go up and down steep gradients can be a bit of a nightmare. Some railways solve the problem of climbing hills by either spiralling tunnels or wide curves, but in some cases, going up and over is the only option. Luckily for many, the problem was unknowingly solved before commercial railways were even a thing. In 1811, John Blenkinsop developed a new type of railway called the Rack and Pinion. It wasn't developed for mountain regions, rather for the colliery industry. Blenkinsop worked for the Middleton Colliery in Leeds, the first railway line to be authorised in 1758. At the time, the railway was powered by horsepower, but Blenkinsop understood the limitations of horsepower, especially up the incline up to Middleton, and using the tested canal network was not an option. So he met up with steam manufacturers Benton, Murray and Wood to design a new type of steam engine. From Trivivik's early work, Blenkinsop knew the engine's weight was going to be important. He didn't want another incident like Trivivik, where his first engine, while successful, was so heavy it broke the iron rails it travelled on. On the other hand, extra weight meant more adhesion, which would be good especially up the incline. In a bold move, Blenkinsop instructed the manufacturers to make the engine as light as they could and patented a new type of railway that wouldn't rely solely on the use of adhesion. He invented what would be known as the rack and pinion. The new engine would be fitted with a cog, a pinion, to the underside and its teeth connected to a third rail. The cog gave the extra adhesion to the engine Blenkinsop was hoping for and in 1812 the engine, weighing in at just 5 tonnes, was unveiled. This engine and others afterwards were hailed as the first ever commercially successful steam locomotives in history and was able to pull 38 wagons with a 140 tonne load weight up an incline of 1 in 440. It was slow at only 2 miles an hour, but it was mighty. Blenkinsop's rack and pinion was just one in a line of rack and pinion designs, but it was Dr. Roman Apt that really took the pinion to the next level. Instead of using one cog and one toothed rail, Apt developed a twin pair of rack and pinions for each axle. By using two cogged rails instead of one, the chances of a rail failing due to a chipped broken tooth or a fault in the pinion was greatly reduced. In addition, the pinions were a line offset, so at least two of the teeth were always engaged and the braking system was attached to the pinion instead of the outside wheels. This new system was cheaper to produce and it was clear that this new system was perfect for gradients where normal rails simply wouldn't work. The first use of the ABS system was in Germany. However, the best example is one that is still going today, the Snowden Railway. A railway to the summit of Snowden was first put on the table by Sir Richard Moon in 1869 for the London and North Western Railway. It wasn't well received at first, but in 1894 Sir Richard got his wish and the Mountain Tram Road and Hotels Company was formed. The construction began in earnest 
and through sheer grit and a lot of dynamite, the 8 kilometres of track was completed in just 14 months. The rack and pinion was fitted, but it also included one unique feature to the railway. The track included an anti-derailment feature that secured the engine and the carriages to the tracks and ensured the engine and the coaches could not be lifted off the teeth. Travelling up and down the mountains in the Snowdonia National Park, the track and pinion railway takes passengers through some of the most beautiful views in the country. The train starts at the station of Lambreth and starts to climb up Mount Snowdon, meandering through forests and gorges before reaching the waterfall. From the deep forest, the space opens up to clear countryside and passengers get their first glimpse of the impressive mountain. Evidence of dwellings around the railway show off its history as the houses that were once belonging to farmers and quarry workers are reclaimed back to nature. The train continues higher and higher up the mountain and the rack and pinion really comes into its own. There is a small stop called Halfway Station where steam engines get a break and a drink before continuing on. The Halfway Hut is not original as the first hut was destroyed in a storm, presumably taking their famous lemonade recipe with it. Passengers can view the pathway taking walkers up to the summit and the ruins of medieval settlements can be seen in the distance. As the train leaves the station, the scenery dramatically changes from rolling hills to rocky valley. This impressive valley is imposing. You are feel as though you are on the edge of the world as the side of the mountain dips away to the jagged rocks below. The early spring final destination is Cogwin Station. Due to the snow and ice on the summit, this is one of their main stops. Here passengers can explore or continue to the summit, or if they can just take in the view over the cliffs. From May through to the summer, the train can reach its literal top station, the summit. The summit boasts the highest sea level tourist centre in the UK and gives explorers a grand view over the entire park and on good days, even seeing the coast of Ireland. The summit is also known as the Land of the Eagles, with a very good reason. You can't just run any engine on a rack and pinion railway, but the Snowdon Railway isn't just limited to one type. Both steam and diesel work equally well. The Snowdon Railway boasts seven steam locomotives, with two, Enid and Wedfer, currently in steam. The twin Swiss engines were constructed in 1895. Two more are awaiting overhaul, while three are currently either on static display or in storage. The carriages, while they are overhauled above, still run on the original bogies that would have been introduced in 1896. The railway is still going strong over 120 years after its inception, taking millions of people to the summit to see the fantastic views and sit in the lap of the gods but it's all thanks to the rack and pinion, a simple cog that can literally climb mountains.